I'm Matt Wadel. I'm here at the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia, and here's a specimen spotlight with the cervical vertebrae of the sauropod, Suasia. There's a nice skeletal diagram by Jason Poole showing the material that we know of Suasia from this specimen and the red bones are here on exhibit. There's some signage about it. And we've got the atlas, the first cervical vertebra, and we'll use the shadow of my finger as a pointer, in anterior view. So we're looking at it from the head side. Then the axis with the dens that would slot into the ring of the atlas. And there's a nice pneumatic fossa here that just has a bit of a ridge coming in below that's not even slightly subdividing this really. Um, also of note is there's a little epipophysis here, a little muscle attachment above the post seg. Then here in cervical three, there's a little bit more of a ridge coming across that lateral fossa and a really nice prominent epipophysis here in cervical four. It's a little bit tricky to see behind the cervical rib, but there is a ridge right there dividing the lateral fossa, sub slightly dividing it, not completely separating it. Also this, you can get a sense of how wide the neural spine is. There's the crack. It's not a bifurcation, it's a crack, it's missing bone. Uh, Jerry Harris established that in his paper, in his description, and really, really prominent epiphysis. Then I think cervical five, I believe that cervical five is missing, and here's cervical six. Again, the neural spine actually is quite wide, medial laterally, so if we come around here, you can see the width there of the neural spine. And you can see that there is an epipophysis over on the far side right there. And on this side, right above the post side, the epipophysis is broken off. And the lateral fossa, uh, I think the crucial bit is broken out there, but you can see there's a little bit of bone trending down that way. So again, there would have been a ridge not completely dividing this fossa, but now when we come back to the next cervical, now there's two distinct lateral fossa. There's one here coming down onto the parapophysis. There's another one back on the centrum and they're separated by now, a bony septum. And again, a really nice prominent epipophysis there above the post -sig. Another thing of note about this specimen is um, C2, that axis, just has a round, oh, there we go, ventral sort of posterior centrum. By the time we get to cervical three, there's a low ridge right there on either side. So the floor of the centrum is flat, but that ridge isn't really extended down into a flange. It's starting maybe to be a little bit of a flange, a little bit more of a flange in cervical four. And then by the time we get to cervical six, there's a very distinct process. The flange is extended as a distinct process right there. It's sticking down an additive feature away from the ventrolateral margin of the centrum. So it's definitely something that sticks out from the ventral margin of the centrum. And then same thing back here on cervical seven. So really nice material, really nicely preserved. Lots of cool morphology. And those are the cervical vertebrae of the holotype of Suasia on display in the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. And some birds too.